who are you? Episode 14. Do you have something interesting? You can see that the deceased wasn't denying anything to himself. The guy was quite wealthy, that means he was respected. I don't understand one thing. Why did you call us to a suicide case? And the whole crowd at that? Not the whole. Where's Sergi? He's still on a sick leave. Oh, I see. He is on a sick leave when we're at the directorate. And when we need to go to a call with a dead body, he's... Let's go already. Well, is it a suicide? As far as I can say before the autopsy, it is. Aha. Uh -huh. Not a single note. What is the approximate time of death? 5.45 p.m. How can you be so precise? There was a gunshot. Deceased's widow is in the kitchen. She ran in here on hearing the shot. I see. <laughs> Laelia, get it together. We have police in the house. Hello. 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 Major Mischenko, Directorate General of the Police, our consultant on grave crimes, Inga Stefan. I'm Tina. Mr. Solov's secretary. Okay. This is Lyalia, Andri's wife. I'm sorry. His widow. Lyalia, can you testify? Can you hear us? We're from the police. I understand that she won't be able to testify. She's in shock. Yes, I'll go and call the doctor. Mr. Major. Just Major. Excuse me, Major. I can testify. I was with Lyalia when... when Andre fired a shot. Lyalia was opening the door for me at the time. Well, Dasha, is something wrong? I have no idea, Michaelo, but something is definitely wrong. 
Do you have doubts that it was a suicide? I don't to waste my breath now. The autopsy will tell. Okay. What is it? Was something broken? Where? It was found there, under the deceased's armchair. If something was broken, it could be done only there. There is a stain there as if something was wiped. The floor is a bit shiny. Smells like whiskey. Who wiped it? And why? I have no idea. Something is definitely amiss there. It's too clean, Misha. Too clean. There. Andre needed some papers from the office. And I brought them. And you're sure that you entered the house and heard a gunshot right away. And it was exactly at 5.45. Absolutely. Andre. Highly values being on time. Valued. Yeah. I had to be here at 5.30, but got into traffic. Well, I was waiting for Lyalia to open the door. I was constantly looking at my watch, and Lyalia opened the door at 5.44 sharp. We just entered the hall and... And something went bang in the office. And what did you do? We got scared at first. Lyalia froze even. Then we rushed to the office. Andri was lying in an armchair there. Did you realize that he was dead right away? No. Lyalia froze. She couldn't move at all. Then I approached and saw a wound on his temple, blood on his shirt, and a gun on the floor. What did you do then? Did you call the police or the ambulance? Are you from the police? How did I? You came here, and I didn't meet you. Andre wouldn't like that. Do you want some tea? No, no, thanks. Stay with the doctor. He'll help you. You need to calm down. Don't worry. Come on. I beg your pardon. Can I go with Lyalia? She is definitely not the smartest woman in the world, but she loved him to pieces. Did Andre love her as much? Of course. For her, he was like a prince for a Cinderella. We'll continue later. Very weird. When I was talking to Mr. Solov, I get the impression that their story was the one of a prince and a Cinderella. I wonder why this prince called in the secretary with papers first and then shot himself to provide his wife with an alibi. Or the contrary, the secretary provided an alibi for his widow. Well, let's go. Did you forget? I am driving. I'd like to accompany you. You'll go with guards and the escort car like a real princess. It's not the best joke. You. Well, it's not a suicide. There's no need for an autopsy. I did Mr. Solov's autopsy on the first day we've met. Our individual had a huge number of complexes. He found a victim in his wife and was compensating his suppressed wishes on her. So, I think that she killed him. Lyulia. Can we hand the case over to the court? Wait. Solov overdid it somewhere. He said something rude or overreacted. It became the last straw. But the secretary turned out to be faster, smarter, and slyer. I think we need to wait until morning and think it over. I'll go to the pool in the meantime. 
I deserve it. Sure, and... Good evening. Good evening, a night swim, as usual. Yes, Lyosha. It's a cure for my insomnia. Will you leave it in the safe again? Yes, there's no reception in the pool anyway. Thanks. We're closed. It's 22.20. Come tomorrow at 8. Damn it! It is indeed late. Year, your timing sucks, man. I am saying, your timing is bad. Lyosha, is something wrong with the electricity? Fine, fine, I got it. I am coming out. You can swim some more, princess. Yeah. I will wait. Thanks for arranging our date so fast. Do you still think that it was a suicide? One year ago. Yes. I see. <clears throat> you know, I was always sure that good cops have intuition. But you don't have it. It happens. It does. You worry about the wrong things again, princess. And I, your guard will just sleep for a bit. We have a more important topic to discuss. Isn't it common to tell each other about ourselves on the first date? Is it our first date? What about the Snow White at the Lyceum? Yes. It was an important moment. That was when I realized that you were my princess. However, it wouldn't call our first meeting a date. Fine, if it's our first date. Tell me about yourself. <laughs> Don't fake it, princess. Didn't your cowboy from the FBI tell you enough about me? You're overestimating him. Agent Morgan is not a genius, of course, but he's quite good. Otherwise, I wouldn't let him be close to you for so long. And sleep with me. And sleep with you, among other things. But the main thing is to be with you. To be in your life, in your thoughts. And that's strictly my prerogative. There won't be competitors here. And you know about it well. Do you remember what happened to your friend, the swimmer? Urgently. Send an operative group to the sports club at the 12 Stasenko Street, and an ambulance too. I'm already on my way. Why did you kill your brother? I didn't even know him. Because he dared to laugh at my love. Shit, bro. So, you're in love. 15 years ago. With whom? 
Give it back. Yeah, the girl is first class. I can't say otherwise. Dude, you have to grow up a lot to get her. You're two heads shorter than her. Tomorrow, I'll tell everybody at school about it. They will die of laughter. Better yet, I'll tell Stefan right away. That girl lives. Without knowing that she has such a knight by her side. Fine, and I. You can come out. I can see that you're quite cold. Wait. Is your new name really Yan? Don't disappoint me, princess. Ying. I'm Yan only for you. Ying and Yang are one, don't you get it? Like light and darkness. They are inseparable. One can't exist without the other. You're a romantic too, right? Explain how you'll use it all for real. Just like that. When you're ready, the entire world will be by our feet. I'll never be ready for that. You're almost ready right now. By the way, I wanted to tell you long ago, your psychology lectures at Princeton were very good. I listened to all of them until the end. I admired them. Yes, of course. We'll do everything we can. Goodbye. Good luck. How are you? I've been better. I've been it's a shame that I won't recognize him. How is Lyosha, the guard? He's fine. Came to his senses. Called himself an ambulance and then fell asleep again. Hefty dude. Let's go, I'll take you home. Listen, is he doing all that just to show off before you? Something like that. Yeah. Actually, he's a genius manipulator. He believes that we're an ideal couple. I mean, we can be an ideal couple if he finishes my training. Okay, ying and ying. Yeah, two is one. We can't live without each other. Kind of. Yes. I'm still waiting for your call, Stiefi. Did something happen? I'm not home yet. I'll be there in half an hour. I'll call you. And I beg you, please stop calling me, shh. Give me that. Give me the phone. Hello, Dan. We haven't met yet. But Inga is fine. I'm seeing to that. Shtifi, please call me when you're alone. Love you, kiss you. I'm waiting. That's it. Why are you doing this? What am I doing? Why are you being so informal? That's it. Now I am all yours for sure. All mine. Why is your boss taking you home in the middle of the night? A competitor. I won't tolerate it. Dan, cool down, please. Jealousy doesn't suit you. It's not your strong suit. You wanted me to tell you everything. I can tell you everything right now. I'm listening, Stiefi.
Yeah. Come in. Auntie Clava. Oh. Inga. Hello. Hello. Hello, honey. This is for you. Vitamins. Oh, thanks. Sit down. Sit down. Girls. This is the Inga that I told you about. She saved my life. Stop it, Auntie Clava. Anybody would do the same. If a person is unwell, anyone will help, right? Right? Yes. Well, not everybody, not everybody would do that. It wasn't me, it was the doctors. You practically pulled me up from the grave. Nope. The doctors told me everything. They said, if your neighbor wasn't so fast, we'd be giving you last rites, Granny. Thank God everything turned out fine. How are you feeling? Fine. The doctor said they might discharge me today. Great. I'm only talking about myself. Tell me, oh, are you? Come on. Well. Hello, Sergi. Hi, how are you? Well, I can't do detective work. Listen, if there's something to do there, I'm always ready. Look, Sergi, we got recordings from the CCTV at the sports club. Check them out. Okay, what am I looking for? Yan shown up again. I don't believe in miracles, but he might surface somewhere. Yes, sir. He's normal. They're bullshitting us. It definitely wasn't a suicide. The shot was point blank. There are burn marks, but fewer than there should be. And there are no traces of gunpowder on his hands. Something else? Something else? Well, there's the angle of the bullet that entered the skull. To fire in this way, Salav would have to twist his hand in a very unnatural manner. I got it. Thanks. We'll go now. Thanks. By the way, the criminalists are at a loss too. Well, my head's off again. Well done. You were right about the murder. Widow's motive is obvious. But what about Lyalia's alibi? It's still there. I'm thinking of criminal conspiracy with the secretary. I don't think that the motive is that unambiguous, but the conspiracy. One moment. How can I help the most beautiful employee of the police? I need a biography of an Olga Solova, age 27. Are we looking for something in particular? When and how that Cinderella met Prince Solov? It's three clicks worth of work. I'll call you in five minutes. Specifically you, Inga. Thank you. He will call you. I see, Tina. I see. You're so young, but you know people so well. What relations did he have with his wife? Did they fight often? Tell me as a woman. Was Lily a drama queen? A bitch. They didn't fight at all. Lyalia is a ninny, but she knew who is earning the butter on her bread. On the contrary, she was always trying to please Andrei. She even fired the housekeeper to look after her beloved on her own. Besides, to tell you the truth, Andrei wouldn't tolerate drama. Uh -huh. Was he very strict to his young wife? Not that strict. But Lelia knew her place. Well, they were fine. Don't you think that Yan could have a fed Solov? I thought about that. But no, there are at least two reasons. First, we were called to examine Solov's body right after Yan's call. Secondly, he'd boast of that to me at the pool. There is nothing on the cameras from the sport club. Oh, I forgot to tell you. They installed those cameras just for show. One doesn't work at all. The one above the reception is looking at the ceiling. And the third one is fake. It's funny. Yup. Yes. Thanks, Grigori. We're on our way. Yes. Sergi, go to the criminalists. They have something. We'll do, Major, sir.
And, and Michaela is talking with Solov's housekeeper now, right? Yes. Kristina is mistaken. Nobody fired me, especially Lialia. I mean Olga. She is a nice woman and was looking well after Andri. But she wouldn't be able to clean such a huge house on her own. So, we were doing general cleaning with her once a week. They were married for a year and a half. Was it always like this? No. A year ago, Andri decided that, and Lialia. Olga supported him. Before that, I used to come in every three days. And was buying the food, too. And a year ago, Master decided that his wife could manage on her own. He must have been angry with his young wife to tighten the screws. He pinned a household like that on her. Master always was strict but fair. He paid generous bonuses. He always remembered about my birthday or New Year. Good man. Was Lyalia not a very good housewife? What can I say? Lyalia is a good woman, but she wasn't the one for Andri. He brought her from the boondocks. But Master never offended her. I think he even loved her and tolerated all her tricks. Tricks? Was she allowing herself something? No. He wouldn't tolerate that. When she came to the capital, she was like a puppy on a walk. Happy and jumpy. She wanted to see everything. Ah, clubs and restaurants, I bet. No, cinema and theater, because she loved it all. But Andre quickly explained to her that cinema will always be there. But a good wife should look after the house and care for her husband. Were they thinking about kids? What I don't know, I don't know. But if Andre wanted to... Well... The story of your Cinderella, as one of my friends used to say, is full of shit and sorrow. She was born and grew up in a family of hereditary drunkard proletarians. After the ninth grade, she went to study at the trade school and then ran off from them to a dormitory. Then she got a job at a factory and got married at 18. Very unsuccessful. Yeah. She found the same deadbeat alcoholic, just 30 years younger. Her husband was beating her. For sure. Regularly, as her medical file states. But, by the way, she never filed a complaint against her husband. Right? A classical syndrome of a beaten woman. Yes. How did she manage to meet Solov? And this is the start of a real Cinderella story. There. I'll send you the photos now. Have a look. Solov saw Lyali on a business trip and brought her with him to the capital like a real hussar. And not on some ragged horse, but on a real Mercedes. And nobody has ever seen Lyali in her hometown after that. Solov's lawyers filed for a divorce with her first husband remotely. She never saw her first husband, too. This is the end of the story. Thank you for listening. Oh, no, wait. I'll send you a couple photos now, fresh from the press. What do you mean by fresh? From Solov's 50th birthday. They had bears, gypsies, strawberries and chocolate, black and red caviar. Everything as it should be. So it's not a suicide, right, Doc? It's not, Captain. Come on. They tried to place Solov's fingers on the gun, but they did a bad job. He couldn't hold the gun that way. And what about those small shards? They come from a broken glass. We found it in a bin in the hall. Looks like somebody tried to collect the shards but missed some of them. They didn't have enough time. What was in the glass? Expensive whiskey. There was a wipe stain by the table too. By the way, we also found a sponge that was used to wipe whiskey off the floor. Yes, yes, there it is. His business was doing fine. 
He was even planning to open a new office. It means we may forget about the version of a suicide. Sasha, what do you have from the cameras around the house? Yeah, at noon, Solov's wife went out. She was out for two hours. At 1700, Solov arrived himself. The secretary came in the evening. She came to find a dead body. Okay, excuse me, I need to make a call. Spider, yeah, please check Lyelia's medical file again. I'm interested in everything. Pregnancies, abortions, miscarriages, and the last visit to the gynecologist. Yeah, I'm on it. Aha, uh -huh. thanks, I'm waiting. Anyway, we have two suspects. It's the widow and the secretary. Inga thinks that the widow shot him. I think that there was a criminal conspiracy between the widow and the secretary. I get the widow. She will inherit all the money. But what will secretary get? The secretary could come to early and see Lyalia standing over the body. And then either Lyalia could strike a deal with Tina or Tina could strike a deal with Lyalia. Yeah? Inga, you're definitely an oracle. It's a sad story. Two miscarriages with the first husband. Due to beatings, as I understand. And an abortion for the same reason. And with Solov. Everything is clean with Solov. No pregnancies. But, yesterday, Lyalia went to the ultrasound. Pregnancy of eight weeks was confirmed. Thanks, Spider. You're the best. Well, Inga, do you have something to tell us? Now, yes. The puzzle is complete now. Solov was definitely killed by Lyalia. The motive here isn't the money, but domestic violence. A person can be violated not only physically. Moral tortures are no less painful. And you can't document them. Then why didn't she just pack her things and leave him? She just had nowhere to go. That's it. Lyalia lived under severe psychological violence from Solov. She is three months pregnant now. Yesterday, her pregnancy was confirmed. She came to her husband, told him about it. He must have reacted to it in such a disgusting way that she lost it. Insults, fear, maybe hormonal failure provoked this terrible tragedy. Look what happened to her in a year and a half with Solov. So, it meant that Doe has nothing to do with it. I believe she wasn't thinking about money at that moment. But you can't say the same about Tina. That was in the right place in the right time. She thought that she could gain a lot from the shocked widow. Yeah, that's great. Send her right to the interrogation room and bring him to my office. I know that she won't talk without him. Don't worry. Okay, that's it. Solov's widow came to testify, with a lawyer. I bet that it was Tina who sent her a lawyer. They were together yesterday, and Tina had a lot of time to talk Lyalia into it. That's great. Then I'll talk to him first, and you'll talk to the widow if you can. It's a deal. I don't quite understand why you separated me from my client, Major. I wanted to know the conditions of Mr. Solov's will. He had one, didn't he? A month ago, I drafted a testament for Andrei. He didn't have one before. Why did he decide to do it? Arguments with his wife. They were planning a baby. I even thought that Lily might be pregnant already if Andrei decided to. He called it. Having an insurance. To cut the long story short, all his fortune goes to the child after coming of age. There are constant target payments for the baby. And the money is managed by an executor. The widow has a right to live in the house and raise the child. Under the condition that she never marries again. It means he left her without a penny. Why are the conditions so strict? 
I don't want to slander Andrew's name. We were friends for many years. But he got burned with his first wife, and with Lilia, he was twice shy. He was insanely jealous of her. Were there any reasons? Absolutely none. Ollie is a decent girl. And Andrew? He, six months after the wedding, he went off the rails. She even went shopping only with the driver. He didn't let her go anywhere in a year. She was going out only with him. Sergei, it wasn't Olga who turned to you. Mr. Solov's secretary turned to you. I can see that you want to help your client. Let me tell you how we see this case and you'll decide what's best for her. Where's Sergei? He'll be here in a moment. Olga, don't worry, and we can talk in the meanwhile. I won't talk without a lawyer. It's not on the record. Did you love your husband, Lyalia? Very much. Andre was. He was so kind. He did so much for me. He gave me everything. He saved me. Saved you from what? From your first husband's abuse. I really wasn't worthy of Andre. Who he is? And who am I? But he tolerated it all. Tolerated what? Well, who I am, a gray mouse. I don't know how to behave myself. It was a shame for him to go out with me. I was always doing everything wrong around the house. And even in bed, I was a plank. Calm down, you can't worry, you get it. You wanted to have a child so bad. Yesterday, your pregnancy was confirmed. Of course, you were happy. How did you tell your husband about it when he came back home? I. I brought him whiskey. As intended. He goes to the office. And I follow him with a tray. And I told him there. How did he react? He said that he wanted a DNA test. That I was a whore and that he wasn't sure that the baby was his. I can't believe that Andrew was behaving with her that way. Looks he wasn't that sincere with you. I need to talk to my client. She will sign a full confession, of course. But defense will insist on a crime of passion. Of course. Certainly, I also recommend talking to our psychologist. She insisted that your client was under psychological abuse from her husband from the very beginning and that she committed the crime of passion. Major, sir. Yeah. I beg your pardon. I watched the cameras from Solov's house again. Tina came 10 minutes after the emergency call from the address. Well, there's your main trump card. She called the ambulance and the police. That means that she was going to confess right away. How can we nail Kristina, though? I think I know how. If my friend Andrew didn't lie to me, of course. Miss Tereshkinko, you're suspected of participating in a murder of Mr. Solov and also in giving false testimony and blackmailing his widow. Did Lyalia tell you that? She's deranged? Who are you listening to? That, as you said, deranged girl confessed in the murder of her husband. And you were covering up for her. Why? 
Or do you two have problems with seeing reality? Don't be rude to me, Major. You'll get me for false testimony. But I did it out of mercy. One fool helped another. I covered her up as a fellow female. And her husband was quite an asshole. Dozens of witnesses will confirm it. He was your lover, wasn't he, Tina? Why do you think so? Is every secretary her boss's lover? Not right away and not obligatory, but in your case, it's evident. Besides, you even look like her. She looks like me. Secondly, Solov wasn't a very picky man. He courted every skirt he could reach. Thirdly, even now it's hard for you to hide your dislike for Lyalia. So what? Well, oh. There we go. We got it. Dumb bitch. Why do they call her Lyalia? Yeah. We found it, Major, sir. Just as the lawyer said. At least, Solov didn't play him here. This paranoiac installed a surveillance camera and bugs in his bedroom and in his wife's bedroom. We've checked them out already. Christina gave a real performance for the widow. Don't be scared, girlfriend. I'll cover for you. Nobody will suspect nothing. I'm your alibi. Just don't open your mouth, Lyalia. Yes. Thanks. Great job. Come back here. You knew that Solov was abusing her. Didn't you feel sorry for her? Sorry. For that dumb sheep. I almost burst out laughing when I saw her crawling around the body and wiping whiskey from the floor. Because Andri won't like it. Lailia, open the door. Did something happen? Open up, I tell you. Is Andri in his office? Did you swallow your tongue? Or did Andri shorten it for you? Damn it, you retard. What have you done? Listen to me. We won't tell anybody that you killed him. I'll cover up for you. We need to clean up. Because people will come here now. The house is a mess. You're such a bad housewife. Calm down. We have to clean it up. We have to clean it up, everything. You think you've got me? Courts feel sorry for pretty girls now, especially if you cry convincingly. Tell about my hard fate. I can do it. But dumb Lyalia cannot. Do you know what's interesting? Lyalia doesn't have a penny. According to your lover's will, his wife gets nothing in case of his death. I don't understand at all why you went through these motions. Tina. Most likely she'll get a suspended sentence because she's pregnant, plus the heat of passion, plus her full confession, and you'll go to jail. Besides, Lyalia has got a very good lawyer that you found for her, by the way, and I think Olga is not just a client for him. Therefore, he'll tell her sad story very convincingly in court. In living color, I'd say. She doesn't eat salami. She eats fresh cucumbers. Does she like carrots? Well, shall we get some coffee? Sure. Do we have business? 
Why do you think that we need to have business? We can just talk about animals, and not only animals. Oh, it's good that I've found you. You have a visitor. Who? Well, the officer on duty couldn't reach you and said, please tell Inga that a gentleman came to see her. He says that she's expecting him. Nonsense. I'm not expecting anybody, but I was going to leave anyway. Thanks, Captain. Have a nice day. Bye. Listen, Oleg, he is with flowers, I mean. That guy is with a bouquet. I'm so glad to see you, Stiefi. I've missed you so much. Hello? How did you end up here? What a surprise. Well, it's not a surprise. How could I leave my beloved girlfriend in trouble? I took the first flight from Richmond to get to you. 